It's art snacks time! Kinda. Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Let's do a no box art box, shall we? I know I said I'm interested in recreating the May Scrawler box I actually got as a no box art box challenge, and I probably will, but I wanted to do a supply combo I haven't done yet. I feel like a lot of the videos I've done in the last couple of weeks have just been tossed up to get something up, and this challenge always gets me completely invested again. Quick little explanation before I get too far into the chatter, because you're gonna see it on screen very soon. I'm very open about the fact that I usually plan my art elsewhere and then trace to my final paper, and sometimes I'll even reuse older sketches. The paper I went with today is not compatible with traditional tracing, so I had to do a transfer paper method. Normally that means I whip out a sheet of tracing paper that I coated in graphite way back when, sandwich it in between the sketch on top and the final paper on the bottom, and use a ball stylus to go over the sketch to push the graphite from the transfer sheet in the middle to the final paper underneath. But I didn't want the graphite sheen in this, so I used pastel. One of the colors that I'll be featuring in this piece is a bright orange, so I grabbed an orange soft pastel and did the exact same trick. And yes, I've done this exact butterfly before. I'm reusing this sketch from one of the very first pieces I did when I bought my Inktense pencils, so it won't come out exactly the same, but before anyone decides to go all eagle-eyed and snoop through the archives so they can call me out, it's not a secret. <laughs> I drew half of this butterfly in my sketchbook three years ago, traced it twice on tracing paper to make a whole butterfly, and now I've actually used it three times. With that out of the way, today I'm recreating the June 2021 Art Snacks box no box art box style. What's the no box art box challenge? It's a simple challenge I made up back in 2018 to recreate art supply subscription boxes using the stuff you've already got. It's a great way to experience boxes from the past that aren't available, experience boxes you can't afford right now, test out a subscription service before actually subscribing, redo the challenge of a box you actually got, etc. Step 1. Pick any art or craft subscription box, pick a past month that already shipped out, and look up the contents. Some services, like Scrawlerbox, keep a record of every past box on their website, even when back order boxes are sold out, so it's really easy to look them up. For others, you'll have to find unboxing videos or photos of the menu cards on social media. Step 2. Match the supplies the box sent as close as possible using supplies you already own. Exact matches are fine, as long as you're not recreating a box you actually got. If that's the case, use the next closest match. Step 3. Make art. If the box had a prompt or a theme, try to stick to it. Only add missing essentials, such as a pencil or a piece of paper. If you share on social media, use the hashtag NoBoxArtBox, and feel free to send me a link so I can see it. If you upload to YouTube, definitely let me know, because I curate a master playlist for the challenge and I'd love to add yours to it. As per usual with any art box video, I'm going to go through what's in the box and what they're worth. Since this is a NoBox art box, I'll also mention what I'm using instead, and since Art Snacks is an American service, all prices will be MSRP values in US dollars. I've taken these values directly from their website, as they tend to sell MSRP unless it's specifically marked as a sale item, conversions to Canadian dollars and British pounds, research for real world retail pricing, and all sorts of math to let you know if this box would have been a good idea for you or not are in the description box down below. I typically look at Dick Blick first for US sale prices, Curry's or Above Ground for Canadian, and Jackson's for the UK. Art Snacks has two tiers, Basic and Plus, where Plus gets one to two additional supplies plus a full-sized surface of some sort that is presumably ideal for the supplies. Everything in the Basic box is also in the Plus box, plus some extras. In June's case, the extras don't really change the experience of using the supplies, so I'm not going to say that I'm specifically doing the plus box, but I'll mention what those supplies are when we get there. First up, everyone received a Montana Bold Marker with an 8mm round nib, and this has an MSRP of $9.50 US. This is an alcohol ink in a pump marker, which is not a common find, and everyone got black ink. There are several ways you could match if you don't happen to have an alcohol marker with a pump nib. If you decide the pump action is the most important part, you could go for something like the Higgins Blackmagic India ink pump marker. Or you could go with a good old acrylic marker like those made by Posca. If you think the alcohol ink is the most important feature, you could do what I've done and use a standard office supply type permanent marker, in this case one by Edding, 
you could use the chisel nib of one of your alcohol-based art markers, like this Ohuhu marker. Note that I have absolutely nothing that'll do 8mm lines in black, so the best we're getting is the 5mm chisel in that edding marker. I do believe the Montana marker is a bullet-style semi-round nib, so you could probably get a 5mm line out of it if you wanted to, so this is fine. Next up, everyone got a Kuratake Zig Fudogokochi fine tip brush pen, which has a nib that looks exactly like the Tombow Fudonosuke pens or a Micron PN. And these are water-based pigment inks. MSRP is $3 US and the color was randomized. Art Snacks is currently selling these open stock, so we'll assume that the possible color selection is blue black, dark green, rose pink, royal blue, and sepia. To replicate this, I'm using a Tombow Fudonosuke pen in brown for the sepia shade. Third on the everybody list is a pair of Derwent Lightfast colored pencils, and these have an open stock MSRP of $4.10 US for a total of $8.20. Open stock color options on Art Snacks are Mid Blue, Mustard, Mars Orange, Amber Gold, Denim, Green Earth, Derwent Red, Strawberry, Platinum, Mist, Ocean Blue, Blue Violet, and Granite. I do have six of these pencils from an old scholar box, but none of them are the available colors, so I decided to pick suitable colors from my Faber Castell Polychromos collection. Both brands are harder oil based leads, and the colors are all lightfast. I matched the Mars Orange and Denim colors as close as possible, mostly because I like the sound of Mars Orange, and then I picked Denim because Art Snacks loves to send colors that won't blend nicely. If you're not brushed up on your color theory, orange and blue are complements, which means they're opposite on the color wheel. Adding a tiny bit of one to the other can produce a pleasant darker shade of the more saturated color, but start adding more and you'll quickly get brown. Every time, orange and blue, red and green, yellow and purple, these make brown. A primary mixed with the secondary created by the other two primaries makes brown. The last item that everybody got was a Uniball Signo UM153 white gel pen. These are a pretty standard 1mm rollerball gel pen with white ink, and the MSRP is $3.59 US. Between these and Sakura Jelly Rolls, look around YouTube and Instagram, and you'll think that there aren't any other white gel pens worth using. Some people swear by the Signo, claiming it's the best, most opaque white pen out there. They're pretty darn good, I'll give you that, and they're far better than the standard Jelly Rolls. If you get a jelly roll without a size marked, assume it's an 08, not a 10, a 0.8mm ball, not a 1mm ball. Personally, I find that the signal ball tends to get gunky quite fast, and you have to scribble or wipe on something else to clear them up and get them going again way too often, no matter what you're coloring on top of. If you want opacity without the clogging, just get a 1mm jelly roll. If you care about the white gel ink not soaking up the pigment of anything underneath it, that's when you grin and bear it with the Signo. Alternatively, the Hybrid Gel Grip Pen by Pentel is an excellent third contender with similar ink to the Signo, but a rollerball that behaves a little more reliably. Moving on to the plus items. The reason why I say it doesn't really matter either way this month, the bonus supply is an Itoya Pro Folio Midtown Pouch. This is a 4x7 inch zippered pencil case with three pockets inside, even though it's not very deep, and you can get it in gray and blue or charcoal and maroon. MSRP is $5.99 US, and the big selling point is that it's water resistant. I'm showing you a random little zippered pouch in those dimensions, full of pens, so you can get an idea of what a 4x7 really is when it's in use. Finally, the surface for the Plus Box customers, these guys got a Strathmore 400 series toned mixed media art journal. This is a hardbound sketchbook in 8.5 by 5.5 inches, bound in landscape orientation, with 48 pages of 300 GSM mixed media paper in tan or gray. MSRP is $21.99. At first, I was considering trimming down a piece of my Strathmore 400 series art again toned paper, but this is not even 200 GSM and it's an extremely smooth paper. I don't think it's a good substitute. I ended up going with Paint on Mixed Media Paper by Claire Fontaine in grey. This is almost exactly the right dimensions for what was sent in the box, and at 250 GSM it's almost the same weight as well. I went with a Monarch Butterfly because orange, black, and white demanded it, and I decided to play with different ways to lay down colored pencil as I went. The orange of the butterfly I burnished in the first go, which is easy to do on this paper, but I don't recommend it if you're trying to build up without showing any pencil strokes at all. For the blue background, I kept my hand light and worked 
worked in small motions to lay down a paler shade and let the grain of the paper show through. Since this is a toned gray and not a bright white, it ends up looking like an intentional artistic effect and not like unfinished work done with child quality art supplies. Overall, I think this is a really interesting combination of supplies and I love Derwent's Lightfast pencils. So if I knew about the inclusion ahead of time and I'd had the cash to order the basic box, I probably would have sprung for it just to have a couple more in my collection. I won't be ordering what they've got open stock because there are better prices out there and I'd have to pay shipping. There are definitely sources for these pencils without shipping fees. I love mixing colored pencil with alcohol ink, though I wouldn't have thought to do it with more of an office supply marker like I ended up using. I also love and regularly use white gel pens with both of these things, and a pigment ink liner pen in different colors is also very likely to feature in my work. Really, this box was right up my alley. These are things I use a lot, and I like the brands. I'm not sure I would consider the plus box worth it this month. I wouldn't be happy with the pencil pouch as an added value supply. And although the Strathmore Journal is a nice sketchbook with a generous number of pages, if I were trying to build this box fresh at an art store, I wouldn't have picked up a Strathmore Journal. If I had that journal, it would take me a decade to fill it. So this round goes to the basic box based on what I think th of the supplies. I'm sure the plus box will come out looking quite worthwhile in pricing numbers, plus usually does, but remember that's MSRP and that's assuming that you want the extras in the plus box. Normally I do, this month not so much. Come back on Friday for a new Art Attic Science collab video and tell me in the comments down below if you want to see me do limited color palettes from Pride Flags before June is over. I considered doing that for today's video but I chickened out because I lost subscribers last week when I did a Pride themed book video. That may just be the book crowd though and it may also just be people who were reminded by the notification that they don't actually watch my channel. Art audience! <laughs> Are you good with Pride stuff? If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!